August is four months old. For Bojana, her mother, there's no question of her using any products containing chemicals. For example, the body lotion being used here is an oil and calcium liniment, a mixture based on olive oil, 100% natural. Companies tend to add a lot of useless products like preservatives containing lots of endocrine disruptors. Not only are they unnecessary, they are harmful to health, for adults and even more for young babies. Bojena is one mother who actually reads the labels on cosmetics. And it's precisely by examining these labels that the consumer association UFC Kushwazir has compiled a list of 250 products containing ingredients that could be considered as of concern. The much talked about methyl isothiazolinone is on the list. Also on the list are products containing parabens and phenoxyethanol, another preservative the specialists claim is dangerous for the liver and blood. Even more worrying is the fact that some chemical substances can affect the hormonal system. These are endocrine disruptors. With an allergen, you develop spots and the next day you stop and put the product to one side. With a product that contains endocrine disruptors, there is no visible side effect. It is even more worrying as the effect will only become apparent 30 years later. For some doctors, the use of endocrine disruptors should be eliminated at all costs, particularly for children and pregnant women. Specialists are also warning about the cocktail effect. These endocrine disruptors are also present in food, the air, and sometimes even in water. They affect particularly women who are pregnant. This is a crucial time as women who are transferring their toxins to the baby. Potentially they're going to affect the programming of the baby's cells and this could lead to various illnesses later on, particularly different forms of cancer, because it is a known fact that the most frequent cancers are those that depend on hormones like prostate or breast cancer. Cancer, there, it's been said. Others talk about diabetes, infertility, and even a link with conditions like autism. So what kind of response has the Kushwazir study attracted? We asked a doctor who represents the industry, which she says respects obligatory safety regulations, including safety checks. This safety assessment includes an evaluation of all the ingredients that are in the products and the ingredients are safe. So there are no cosmetics legally marketed in Europe that are dangerous. And the conclusions of the study that you cite are very exaggerated. In most cosmetic products there are endocrine disruptors. Everyone recognises this. The debate is more about the amount. It's tiny, according to the industry, but others say even if that's the case, it's still dangerous. The amount defines whether it's a poison. That's not the case anymore for these disruptors. It's been demonstrated that with a smaller amount, the effect was sometimes more negative than higher quantities. The German safety agency brought together scientists and experts from different sides of the world very recently, and experts concluded that there was currently no scientific evidence that this phenomenon existed. In other words, it's an exaggerated phenomenon that no one is sure actually exists. Donc personne n'est sûr qu'il existe réellement. Strange as it may seem, there's no specific regulation on chemical ingredients in cosmetics for children. But the industry insists it already addresses this by limiting the number of substances, for example. The skin of a baby, in terms of permeability, in terms of how molecules pass through the skin, behaves exactly like the skin of an adult. After a few weeks of life, very, very quickly, there is no difference between a baby's skin and the skin of an adult. Scientifically, this is wrong. The little ones have more fragile skin. It is thinner. So if it's thinner, the molecules will pass through more easily. Then it is more fragile because it's not as protected as adults. Adults secrete sebum, sweat. Toddlers sweat very little. So they do not have the sebum or sweat. They have a hydrolipidic film, which is not completely protective. So why don't manufacturers replace chemicals with natural materials? Some say it's because they don't want to change their process. Others say it's because chemicals are very effective. 
But it seems there are alternatives. After a career in the chemical industry, Celine Couteau became a mum and launched a range of natural cosmetics for babies. Typical nappies contain 80% plastic, but these are 100% natural. We assume that today natural materials are as good as a material derived from petrochemicals. It delivers exactly the same efficiency, the same care results, the same cleaning qualities as a petrochemical molecule. You can achieve exactly the same efficiency results and performance with a natural product as a product derived from petrochemicals. The European Commission has given its definition of endocrine disruptors, describing them as substances that have adverse effects on human health, which act on the hormonal system, and the link between them is proven. But it's not enough for the consumer associations, who also want more debate over industry lobbying and animal testing.